Dit is Papa Alfa 0 Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag, 27 november 2016. Dit is het bulletin van zondag. Today we have some news of Australian WIA and of course some Morse code words. Today in 12, 8, 15, 26, 40 and 50 words respectively. And we have an SSTV image in PD90 with a vintage transceiver and a receiver. From Australia, this is VK1WIA and the weekly WIA amateur radio news service on RF, internet streaming and text at wia.org.au. This is our lead story for today, November 27, 2016. On a salt lake in central Australia early next year, a radio amateur will conduct a series of tests of a wide area radio network destined for the planet Mars. Robert Brand, Victor Kilo 2, Uniform Romeo Bravo of Thunderstruck Aerospace, reports it is an essential part of a project to develop the Mars nanolander and methane detection system called Median, set to land in 2025. The project calls for 10 separate penetrators to be ejected at about 6 kilometres from the surface of Mars. They are to spear into the surface of Mars, form a ring about 8 kilometres wide. The radio systems will begin measuring distance between the other landers and map the network. Robert VK2URB says they will then switch to a random packet mode and begin sending messages to an orbiting craft. Even the orientation of each probe covering an area around the size of a small city will be detected and used to calculate the direction that wind and hopefully any methane on the thin Martian atmosphere may show. Robert is the design architect of the landing system, the mapping, orientation, communications, data relay and the ongoing non-methane science package. He says that never before has a network of probes been landed anywhere outside the Earth. It's expected the tests in Central Australia will demonstrate the essential role that radio will play in mapping, locating, orientating the network and then relaying data around the network. The tests will involve dropping a simulated heat shield from 3 km altitude and having the impactors fire at 2.5 km to simulate the impact that each would have on the planet Mars. Ham Radio will be providing essential communications for these tests and the event. It's hoped a special event around the testing will attract the interests of ham operators worldwide and focus attention on the role that Australia is playing in space missions. A TU trial of phone jamming equipment at Goulburn Jail in New South Wales will thwart inmates using them. The ACMA approved the trial of the jammers that otherwise are illegal to use or even possess. The Goulburn trial follows the successful use of the technology at the Lithgow Jail, also in VK2. There are dozens of antennas around the jail that emit a very low power signal to block mobile phones, but the signal is not strong enough to affect any other externally based phone services. A 19-year-old man from Rockbank, northwest of Melbourne, faces offences related to the alleged unlawful interference with air traffic control and endangering the safety of aircraft. He's alleged to have made 16 separate unauthorised radio transmissions at Melbourne Airport and Avalon Airport between September and November this year. The Australian Federal Police laid four counts of endangering the safety of aircraft contrary to crimes, the Aviation Act, whilst the Australian Communications and Media Authority had a count of interference likely to endanger safety or cause loss of damage contrary to the Radio Communications Act. Briefly, in the Melbourne Magistrates Court November 22, the defence lawyer told the court Paul Sant had been diagnosed with autism and depression, he was remanded in custody to reappear Monday and then is expected to apply for bail. Outside the court, the AFP's head of crime operations said if the offences are proven, they could have a maximum penalty of up to 20 years imprisonment. I think everybody's experienced the rise in the noise floor levels on the HF and VHF bands. The noise floor has been measured in rural, urban and city environments 24 hours a day and in the four seasons of the year. The Radio Society of Great Britain is the latest to express concerns about it. A recent RSGB report was that there was an initial threat to HF from broadband over power line or BPL technology, but this has been superseded by noisy electronics, switch mode power supplies and broadband internet delivery systems, such as VDSL2. A further potential threat from wireless power transfer systems is being closely monitored at the ITU. Earlier this year, the UK regulator, Ofcom, 
revised the noise floor criteria by 12 dB for its business radio users of the VHF bands. The new Ofcom noise floor level means 150 watts is needed to achieve the coverage once obtained with a 10 watt transmitter. Your WIA has included the rising noise floor argument as part of the request for higher transmit power when the licence condition determinations are reviewed next year. Shortwave signals on SDR Spectrum Grabber. A wideband software-defined radio may be the answer to capture large swabs of spectrum for later retrieval from a secure digital memory card. Hacker Magazine reports that the London Shortwave Listening Group has such a device with an HF-up converter, a Windows tablet, a dipole antenna and a few bits and bobs. The briefcase-sized SDR Spectrum Grabber can be set up in the low-noise environment of a local park. On a waterfall display has been stations in New Zealand, the Philippines and Brazil. WIA's Jim Linton, VK3 Papa Charlie, tells us that the whole lot was designed and built by a 16-year-old. Idea to broadband blanket the Earth's surface. The SpaceX program wants to have a satellite-based internet service from the next decade. The market is long-distance traffic now carried by undersea cables and a share of local and consumer business traffic. SpaceX has asked the US Federal Communication Commission for an initial 800 satellites. Yes, 800. Kilo Mike 4 India Papa Foxtrot makes a big announcement. Ten-year-old Hope, Kilo Mike 4 India Papa Fox, has announced that she will be operating a special event amateur radio station from the set of the USA's ABC TV show, Last Man Standing. Hope earned her amateur licence at the age of eight and her first contact was via the amateur radio satellite Fox Oscar 29. She achieved her extra class licence in June 2016, aged nine. The Last Man Standing show stars Tim Allen, who plays radio amateur Mike Baxter, Kilo Alpha Zero X-Ray Tango Tango. First aired in 2011, the sixth series is currently being broadcast in the USA. Indian medium shortwave broadcasts must be scrapped. DNA India, laying out an action plan for air, an IIT Bombay report says shortwave and medium wave services have few takers and must be scrapped. On the Indian Daily News and analysis site Amrika Nayak Dutta writes, Digital Radio Mondial DRM receivers pegged by air as a technology replacement for Soviet-era worn-out short and medium-wave transmitters are just too expensive, the report says. So out with the RF receivers and in with the cell phone PC. Read the full story at the link in the text edition of this week's WIA National News. Weird and Wonderful Radiation fear reaches the Reg Grundies. No scientific proof links the use of mobile phones and Wi-Fi to health issues, but that hasn't stopped marketers from producing underpants that block radiation. On sale in New York, the pair of boxes has an electromagnetic shield made possible by a high-tech fabric. They are claimed to stop over 99% of the radiation, However, these underpants aren't a safeguard against any confirmed threats, but they do give sceptic consumers a comfortable option.
Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren via PI2 NOS. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf s ochtends herhaald. Dit is Papa Alpha 0 Echo Tango Echo. En denk eraan, als je gaat solderen, dat je steeds alleen de kant van de soldeerbout vastpakt waar het draadje uitkomt.